What's going on? What do you want to talk about today? <laughs> yeah, so I got a question. Um, so with the uh, the failure of Terminator, uh, man, I don't even remember what it's called. What it's called? Dark, Dark Fate. Fate. Dark Fate. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Bummer. What are your thoughts on with these reboots? Like, well, not necessarily reboots, but sequels. Like, I'm I'm actually pretty excited to see this new Top Gun that's coming out uh, next year. Um, Can't wait. For what are your thoughts on that? I mean, do you think it's going to do pretty well once it's uh, released? Thank you so much for your call. Let's talk about it because it yeah. seems to be happening more and more with Terminator Dark Fate, which I actually thought was a great movie, yeah. but not financially succeeding the way that they wanted to. Yeah. Do you guys think that people are just getting sick of not original content? Do you think that that's specific to the movie? I think it's specific to the Terminator franchise because we've had so many movies that audiences have gone to and said, great, oh, it sucks. Mm -hmm. Great, oh, it sucks. Great, oh, it sucks. That was three. And Rise of the Machines, Salvation, and, and Jenny Smith. So now <laughs> it's, it, yeah, I will not call it that other thing. You won't? No, because I can't even spell it. So <laughs> um, They couldn't either. Yeah, no, yeah. they couldn't. Um, and so we finally get a good one. And no, and by now, it's like, fool me once, fool me twice, fool me three times, shame on. Like, mm -hmm. it's not, they're not going. But Top Gun, I think, is going to be different because we haven't had 18 sequels. It's the first sequel, and it's Tom Cruise, and it's, you know, he's riding high on Mission Impossible. And I think Top Gun is very, very recognizable in in the, the, the you know, everybody knows Top Gun, right? Yeah. So people are going to go see a Top Gun sequel. Well, we are with the action guys, and they seem to think that Tom Cruise is their mascot. So yeah. thoughts on Top Gun? <laughs> We're actually Tom Cruise's mascot. Yeah. No. Uh <laughs> I, you want to go first? No, go for it. Imagine being Tom Cruise's God, mascot. God, that would be so sick. Like you're a so stuffed sweet. animal in his apartment? <laughs> I mean, it's an apartment. apartment. Yeah, it's it could weird. be one weird. bedroom. How poor am I? <laughs> <laughs> it's also, it's also uh, could be oh, weird, you know? Yeah. It's weird. You say everyone cares about Top Gun, but do they? Do Does this no, generation... I think everybody's heard of Top Gun. Right. Whether they care or not, so that's remains what I, to be seen. What yeah. I think is really interesting is because Arnold and Terminator have been We've been reminded of it over yeah. and over and He's over. He's kind of synonymous even, for the role. Even in a bad way, we've been reminded with the last three films. But the thing is, is that, like, I was born in 88, and I have a show that talks about action movies, and I barely care about Top Gun, period, okay. the original one. Yeah. So I care even less about the sequel. But I'm going to see it because I love Kilmer, I love Harris, and I love Cruise. Yeah. But the younger generation, the people that are anywhere from the age of, let's say, because I'm pretty sure it's going to be PG-13. So let's say the Should age be. of 13 to 30. How many people in there have seen Top Gun and how many of them actually care about it? Cody, that's us. Cody, seen Top Gun and care about it? Uh, I have seen it. I don't really care about the sequel too much. Okay. I, yeah. Same and same. Yeah. Right? So I think that's the big problem because well, the same just people. Sit out of the show. <laughs> I think that don't forget the... your walker. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't not care to the point that Some it makes me it. angry. I'm not like, this is a horrible idea. I just don't have a preference. Right, right. I think that if the question that's being asked is uh, sequels, these reboots in general, and do we think Top Gun will do well, and why did Terminator fail effectively, like what's the difference? I think you can look at a couple things, but the, the hardest one to quantify is that as you get closer and closer to release on these things, it has everything to do with just sort of the atmosphere talking about the project. And I think like when you talk about Dr. Sleep, I mean we were excited about Dr. Sleep. I saw a couple first thoughts reviews and lukewarm thoughts about the movie about a week before my screening. I got sick, decided to skip it because I heard it was mediocre, and now I'm hearing it's pretty good. But a lot of people, I think, saw similar things on Twitter and on Facebook of people just like, yeah, it was X or Y, maybe even unqualified opinions, people who aren't like critics, people who just somehow got to see a preview screening. Yeah. And that affected mine. I didn't see it or review the movie now for the same reason. So I do think – that there's some truth to the idea that like it's really hard to control these things. I feel like I got fucked by that too because mm. this guy across mm. the table from me yeah. came in with less than favorable doctor Sleep. Just the ending. The ending. Yeah, you just you when I said I've, should I've, I go see this, you were like mhm. Mm mm -hmm. And usually you're like Mr. Hype and you love everything about I mean you love Stephen so King many, is, yeah. is my jam the book is my jam so I was concerned it's, but it's, now I'm hearing really good things it's warmed on me since because it's one of those movies where the the ending really kind of I'll say it made me mad hmm. because two-thirds of that movie for me were the book which I love which is batshit insane I mean it really is on paper this thing, I mean, it's about true not like vampires sucking your soul. That sounds weird. And it is weird. And I loved There's it. There's Dorina when we need her. I know. <laughs> and then when it gets to the ending, I don't want to spoil it or anything, that's where I felt like it fell apart for me. But then it stuck with me. And I want to see it again because I'm like, 
I don't know. This there's something that's been bouncing around in my head over it. So, but it's a great point because is it the shining IP and the fact that people didn't know it was a shining sequel because it's called Doctor Sleep? Is it we're over Stephen King because it chapter two it was all this stuff and we just want something better? Was it you and McGregor is not a list? Are we going to that conversation? Mm-hmm. Is it different than? Well, I'll give you I'll give you one just quick example because this is something I've noticed. So. All right, Independence Day Resurgence, Men in Black, the reboot. Mm. Neither of those needed to happen. Everybody talking about those projects, leading up to those projects releasing, knew those didn't need to happen. The closest thing you got to something interesting reinventing one of those projects was Tessa Thompson being one of the leads in Men in Black. But even that isn't really enough to get people to care about something, a franchise, that's kind of dead. Now, take Charlie's Angels, for instance, which is not a movie that I think most people think should happen. I think we definitely were in the camp when we saw the posters of, like, this is too soon. I don't necessarily care about this cast. I cared so much. But... It's a successful actress directing a group of women being kick-ass. And that's a formula that's going to work because there are a lot of people that want to see more movies like that. So even Mm -hmm. though it's a franchise and even though it's a piece of IP that people kind of right now, I think the general consensus is like maybe too soon. Even if that movie is middling and just makes okay money, they will make a sequel because the quality's high and it's a group of women leading the movie. I don't disagree with that. However, take Transformers now, for example. I don't think anybody thought that Bumblebee needed to happen. Right. I, I guess some people, but people were really soured on Transformers, and the movie was excellent. It's great, but it didn't do as well as it should have done. Just like Terminator, based off of how good it was. It's the movies. exact mm-hmm. same way I feel about Terminator because yeah. I happen to love Terminator. I love Dark Fate. Yeah, Charlie's Angels might so. have that exact same thing. Now, I think for something like Top Gun, I doubt they're going for a Top Gun. Three, four, five more movies. I I think that's what Transformers is doing. Probably what Charlie's Angels is doing. I don't think that's what Top Gun's doing. So they don't have that first time to be okay, and then the next times hopefully they'll grow from there. The approval rating on Tom Cruise is pretty high though. Like the the idea of what he's done with the Mission Impossible movies and how he's sort of viewed right now by just the general movie going public is evidenced by the way those movies succeed because they're just Tom Cruise movies. I think Top Gun 2 will do well just based on the fact that it's him flying an airplane, being Tom Cruise. It's yeah. I think it'll have that, right? His approval rating is real high. Yeah, yeah look at it on Good paper. Point. He's standing next to a fighter jet. That's just like – that's just perfect marketing. Top Gun aside, I know maybe you guys don't care about it because you it, it didn't hit you in the nostalgia feels like it hit me because I grew up with that movie. But I think when you just look at a poster with Top uh, with Tom Cruise next to a fighter jet – and you think Mission Impossible, there's something in that that I think could work.